In this video we're going to talk about battery storage options. Quite a few people have asked me why did I choose to get the Tesla Power All 2 uh, to go in my solar system and is there anything else I looked at and there was a few so I'm going to share some of this information with you guys today in this video. Right, so I looked at various different battery storage options when I was considering my kind of solar install and what I want everything to look like. As you will know from previous videos, I went with the Tesla Powerwall 2 uh, for a couple of reasons. One, uh, the cost per kilowatt made most sense to me. I needed a larger size uh, battery storage solution. I was looking for something that could store somewhere between 10 to 15 kilowatts um, for use overnight or from when the sun went down I should say uh, and that seemed best to me. Now I am aware that since I made some of those previous videos Tesla has increased uh, the price um, of the power wall too and everything so keep that in mind so a lot of the prices that I'm going to be providing to you are kind of at the time I did my research so there may have been a little bit of kind of flux in that either based on just the manufacturer putting the price up or some changing based on kind of the economy and the value of the pound and what have you so hopefully this is helpful and kind of maybe will accelerate some of your own research and decision making so i think the first thing to mention really when you're looking at battery storage is there's two scenarios and uh, the first scenario is which is not something i specifically was considering um, but we'll talk about that perhaps in the future, is you don't have to have solar to have battery storage. So obviously one of the options that you have is you could get a battery for storing energy in and you could store that energy at a cheaper rate. So in the UK, for example, there are various economy tariffs, uh, not as common as it used to be, but people in the UK will, will be familiar with like economy seven or economy four tariff which means in the non-peak times, typically you know, after midnight and kind of early in the morning, the electricity will be kind of significantly cheaper than the day rate. So you could utilize that cheaper, store, uh, cheaper cost of electricity to, to pull energy from the grid, store it in your battery, and then use it later on in the day when the uh, electricity is more expensive to so just use it from your battery storage device. So that is an option. Uh, not something I particularly looked at for, for two reasons. One is I was getting solar anyway, uh, and I haven't done some proper math on it, but kind of just rough thinking is it would take quite a long period of time, I think, to pay back the cost of the battery um, in terms of you know offsetting that cost of the cheap electricity of the grid. Obviously, if you're thinking about doing that, do do more maths, to try and work it out, understand what your usage is, what your off-peak rates would be, etc., to see kind of what the payback period would be. I was looking at this purely um, to use in, in the solar setup, right? So I have a nine kilowatt array, a six kilowatt inverter, and my house generally per hour is using around 600 watts uh, with all computers on and everything. So that's a lot of surplus that's going back to the grid. Um, so obviously if I can capture that in a battery and then utilize it in the evening then it to me it makes a lot of sense and one of the things that i'm noticing obviously now it's winter here in the uk there's not a lot of sunlight during the day it's really cloudy really miserable so i am looking at in the winter months offsetting some of that by using economy tariff to pull electricity uh, in the early hours of the morning into the the power wall and then using that during the day but we're not going to discuss that now we'll discuss that in a future video if i end up doing that um I'll probably talk about that in my november month um videos which probably would have come out already by now um so right so back back on um to the battery options in general so the first thing to keep in mind whatever battery storage solution you decide to go for it's important to make sure that this matches up with both your usage and your ability to consume, right? So for example, Tesla Powerwall 2, 14 kilowatt battery, 13 and a half kilowatt um, usable capacity. If you don't have the ability 
to generate a surplus that will fill that battery at 13 and a half kilowatts is probably not worth doing. Uh, also, if your usage is much less than 13.5 kilowatts, then also this battery is too large for you. So you're not gonna benefit from the pound per kilowatt. Perhaps you really do only need a, a four kilowatt or a six kilowatt battery. So it's really important to work out first, what is what 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 are you trying to solve for? So what I t tend to do with um, my setup was I would look at my electricity meter when the sun went down and then I would look at it again in the morning when I got up, so when the sun's coming up, and obviously I would work out kind of what it was average over various weeks. And like I said, for me, that was somewhere between 10 to 15 kilowatts, depending on what's happening at work and at home and everything. So that's how I got to my figure. So you want to do something similar is what I would suggest. And then obviously marry that up with, you know, the size of your solar setup, or if you're going to pull from the grid, does that make sense? So with that in mind, in, in no particular order, I'm going to go through, um, at the time I looked at um, the, these various different batteries, um, how much they cost, um, and kind of what I worked out the, 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 pro, the pound per kilowatt value to be, and just a little bit of background on it, and obviously then you can do your own research if, if one of these is uh, of specifically more interest. So, um, but, 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 um, let's see where we are. Okay, so we have a uh, varying list that I'm going to go through here. I'll start off with the power because obviously it's something I'm most familiar with. So Tesla Power 2, maximum storage uh, capacity of 14 kilowatts. Most usable storage is 13.5 kilowatts. Uh, the cost at the time um, was around £6,850. Comes with a 10 year warranty, uh, unlimited cycles. So you can charge and discharge it as many times as you like over that, those 10 years um, and it should still be under warranty. And what one thing that I think a lot of people don't consider with the price is the Tesla Powerwall 2 has an inbuilt five kilowatt inverter. So that's all part of that bundle. So for the 6,850 pounds, you're also including the five kilowatt inverter. Now, none of these um, prices include the cost of install. So depending on your electronic setup already, you know, that install is gonna cost you, I guess in the UK, somewhere between 200 to 500 pounds-ish, maybe depending on what the electrician would have to do. So that's the Tesla Powerwall 2. Next thing I looked at was the LG Chem batteries. These are quite um, popular. I think they're quite readily available, whereas the Powerwall 2 you have to wait quite a long time for. They, um, had the most common one seemed to be a 6.5 kilowatt battery, which was had 5.9 kilowatts usable uh, power. This was 4,128 pounds and had uh, also a 10 year warranty. However, only had 2,728 cycles. In addition to that, you need to supply an inverter as well. The other um, device I looked at, which was less common and less easy to get hold of, uh, was something called a power vault. And they had them in four, six and eight kilowatt versions. One of the cool things about the power vault is it's using well, it has the option to use uh, recycled Renault batteries. And um, so that's kind of something you're interested in, kind of help with the price a little bit. Um, they had varying costs of, so the four kilowatt was 3,400. The six kilowatt was 4,200. And the eight kilowatt was um, 4,950. All of those prices, I should say, excluded that. Um, they also ha each have a 10 year warranty. But again, no inverter. So you have to add an inverter onto the top of that cost. Next, I looked at the, the Sonon Battery Eco. They have various ranging from a four kilowatt up to a 16 kilowatt. So basically it comes in, in two kilowatt steps. Uh, and the system that I kind of looked at um, there was an eight kilowatt system. And the cost there was 9,500 pounds. Um, again, 
10 year warranty, but 10,000 cycles. And that battery unit also has an inverter included in it as well. Next, I looked at um, a battery called N Phase. They had, um, so it's like a stackable battery that comes in 1.2 kilowatt um, modules. Those were £1,800 each, um, and they had a warranty for 7,300 cycles. Um, and again, you have to add an inverter on the top for that. I also looked at the, the Samsung SDI batteries. So they were 3.6 uh, kilowatt hours. Uh, they were £4,700. And again, you need to have an inverter with one of those. I also looked at the X storage solution, which is from Nissan. So this is kind of taking Nissan Leaf batteries and recycling them into the X storage system. One of the issues that I found with that is actually trying to see if you get hold of one uh, was kind of difficult because I think Nissan actually getting a lot more life out of the, the batteries and Leaf than they expected. So it kind of creates a bit of a hold up in the offering of this product. But anyway, so the X storage solution by Nissan uh, comes in a 3.6, a 4.6, and a 6 kilowatt um, option. So that 3.6, or it might be 3.5 kilowatt, um, was around uh, 3,000 pounds. And that also, again, has an inverter built into it. I also looked at um, a Solax battery system, because for a little while I did look at their inverters for solar as well. They have... Um, a 6.3 kilowatt battery that costs 2,400 pounds but again you do need to have an inverter uh, then there was two more I looked at one uh, which was quite common um, but looked a bit untidy um, in my mind in terms of how you had to stack them um, was a pylon tech battery so this one again had 10 years uh, of warranty not quite sure on how many cycles um, but they kind of come in 2.4 kilowatt stackable units uh, and they were, they're pretty cheap. So 750 pounds per 2.4 kilowatts. But again, you need to add an inverter into this solution as well. And then lastly, I looked at something which is called a Varta Pulse. I looked at that because I'm quite uh, familiar with Varta batteries in terms of cars, but also they do um, storage systems as well. So they offer a, a 6.5 kilowatt battery solution that costs £5,200 and that also has an inverter built in. So off the top of my head, um, when I did some rough, again, these rough numbers, for each of those systems where you need to um, have a battery, uh, an inverter, because it's not included, you're looking to add really about £1,200 for the inverter to go with that um, battery based on kind of what I looked at in terms of, I wanted the inverter to at least pump out five kilowatts and obviously push in five kilowatts to kind of comparison it with the Tesla Powerwall 2. So that's all the batteries I looked at, so quite a few. Um, I will have put some information up on the screen as we go through this to try and um, make it helpful. Um, so I guess the thing that's now interesting to look at is kind of what this really means in terms of pounds per kilowatt. Because that's really how I looked at these things. So like the Tesla Powerwall 2 is expensive at like nearly 7,000 pounds. But if you look at kind of the fact that it's a 14 kilowatt battery and you kind of work it out, really I think the smart way to look at this is what is the cost per kilowatt, not just the cost of the initial offering. So I've worked that out as well. So again, we go back through in the same order. Um, so the Powerwall version two equates to 489 pounds per kilowatt. So keep in mind, this is obviously a big battery. So if you want big battery, this is why I still think the Tesla makes a lot of sense. It's a, a good value per kilowatt item. Uh, the LG Chem battery is 635 pounds per kilowatt. So again, more money than the Powerwall two. Um, that, the power vault that I spoke about, that works out as £742 per kilowatt. The Sonnen battery um, works out as £1,200 per kilowatt. 
The N phase battery, I think, was really the most expensive one. That worked out to be £1,500 per kilowatt. Samsung was also up there in, in the high price bracket, £1,305 per kilowatt. The Nissan X storage um, actually wasn't too bad, still relatively expensive, but much cheaper than the ones we just mentioned there. That worked out to be £857 per kilowatt. Then uh, a couple that um, were actually, I guess, on the on the cheaper side um, was the Solax and the Pylon Tech. So the Solax is only three hundred and eighty pounds uh, per kilowatt, and the Pylon Tech is only three hundred and twelve pounds per kilowatt. So they are really cheap price per kilowatt in terms of the battery storage. But as I mentioned with some of these ones and these two in particular. This doesn't include the inverter, so you need to add the inverter uh, on top of this. And for me, I, like I said, I did look at the Pylon Tech because the price was quite um, alluring, because obviously I like the cheap, um, but I didn't like the fact that it literally just looked like a load of batteries that you're just kind of racking in it, like a server rack. So, I mean, they don't look super ugly, um, but definitely not as nice for me as the, the, the Tesla Powerwall did. Uh, and then finally, the Varta Pulse, that was £800 per kilowatt. So again, I still think if you need a larger battery system, then I still think for me that the Tesla Powerwall 2 makes sense of that, £489 per kilowatt. If you're not too fussed about how things look, I do think that um, the Pylon Tech and the Solex battery systems look like a real good uh, offering and Actually, the Solex doesn't look too bad. Um, it's a pylon tech that I'm not, wasn't super happy about, but they both offer really good price per kilowatt. And if you're happy to have another inverter, um, you know, on the wall or, or what have you, then these are definitely things worth considering. So I hope this video helped. I know it's a lot of data. Um, as I said, do your own research, check the prices, because depending on your look, when you're watching this video, I'm recording it now on the, on the 29th, of November 2018. The prices are going to be changing a lot, probably over time battery technology is coming down, but economy is constantly changing. The availability of these products are going to be changing a lot as well. And I'm sure they're going to be bringing out different um, sizes of battery offering. So just to make you aware, there are, there's, there's still other batteries around that I didn't even look at, right? So look at different ones. This is just the let of course, detail I went into to look into battery storage because I was I knew I wanted battery storage as part of my solar solution, but I wanted to work out what made the most sense financially. Uh, the one thing that I'm not going to deny if anyone uh, was to ask this question, adding battery storage to your solar system will significantly increase uh, the payback time. So I think for me, uh, I think it's increased my payback time by like four years or something, maybe a bit more. Uh, that's my, my current estimation. Um, but for me, I think it's worth it because otherwise I've just got a lot of energy that's going back to the grid and I'm being paid for 50% of that regardless where it's going there or not. So to me, it just makes a lot of sense that I can put it into the battery. Uh, there's a little element of self-sufficiency that will come over time, granted, I've already spent a lot of money, so they have to pay that back before it becomes um, beneficial. So yes, hope it was helpful. Um, please leave comments and thumbs up. If you like what's coming on the channel, please make suggestions about other things that might be of interest. Um, you know, click that bell so you can be alerted when new videos come out. Also leave comments if you've got these batteries and you've had good or bad experiences, that'd be really helpful for other people making informed purchasing decisions and perhaps you've got a battery that I haven't mentioned here and you think it's an even better one than or a better pound per kilowatt and people should really consider it because customer service is really good build quality is amazing etc so please share and help us build a, a community and uh, as always thanks for watching thanks for watching this video a thumbs up would be really appreciated if you're interested in other geek type videos please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.